One of the things that my channel is most known for probably is tiling window managers and as such I get a lot of questions about tiling window managers from viewers of the channel and recently I got a request from a viewer he wanted me to create a tier list of all the tiling window managers that I've tried and I thought that's an interesting video so why not so today I'm gonna do a tier list of 11 tiling window managers that I have used and I feel comfortable enough I, I feel like I know them well enough that I can give a, a pretty good ranking of these or a tier listing of these in my opinion of course a tier list is going to be an opinion piece right it's not going to be factual in any way right it's not definitive you know the tiling window managers that I love you may hate and the ones that I hate you may absolutely love so again it's an opinion piece so let me get started and of course to get started with making a tier list most people are going to use a tier listing program something like tierlist.com or there's proprietary software out there that most content creators use to make their tier list unfortunately those programs aren't available on linux and if, even if they were they're proprietary i wouldn't use them so i'm going to use a free and open source program to create my tier list and of course the program i'm talking about is going to be GIMP. So what I did is I just quickly spun up this little image here. So I created this tier list here and I'm going to have five levels. Let me zoom in 100% and you can see my levels are going to be great, good, okay, meh, and yuck. So which 11 tiling window managers will we be ranking? Let me get into the text tool here in GIMP and I am going to be ranking the following let me make sure you can see all of this i've got the line spacing all wrong here but i'm going to be ranking awesome bspwm dwm exwm i3 window manager left wm qtile specter wm or spectrum stump wm and xmonad now let me go ahead and merge that layer down so there's not that weird line behind it so let me go ahead and make the window full screen here so we can see everything because there was a little bit of a cutoff here at the bottom let's start with the awesome window manager so let me go ahead and gump i'm going to create a new layer uh, because awesome is going to go into the great tier so i'm going to make this layer name great and let's go ahead and add awesome now the reason the awesome window manager is in the great tier is because it's very easy to use it's very new user friendly in that when you install awesome window manager it comes with a panel it already has like a floating mode enabled by default it actually has title bars and window decorations it looks like a floating window manager when you first launch into it until you configure it kind of to be a tiling window manager which is really what it's designed for so even people that have never used a tiling window manager can use awesome it's very easy to configure it's written and configured in Lua, which is kind of nice. It's a, uh, a DWM fork, so actually I think the code base is actually written in C, but the configuration file is written in Lua, and you use a lot of Lua libraries to extend it, and because of this, Awesome is extremely customizable, probably the most customizable window manager bar none, and because of that, Awesome has to be in the great tier. Moving on to the next window manager is BSPWM. Let me create a new layer because it's not going to go in the great tier, but I am going to put BSPWM in a good tier. So now the reason I put BSPWM in the good tier instead of the great tier is because it's a manual tiler and you know, I prefer dynamic tilers like awesome rather than manual tiling window managers like BSPWM. That's just a personal preference. So that's again, it's an opinion piece. The other thing is I'm not crazy about the way BSPWM is configured. It's okay. But the way BSPWM is configured is you write a config file and typically people write this config file using bash scripting but literally you could use any language you wanted to to create this config file because all this config file does is call upon command line bsp uh, programs like bspc and things like that that control the, the windows move windows move workspaces things like that so literally you could actually write your bspwm config in bash or python i mean you could write it in heck you could probably write it in haskell if you wanted to i mean it'd be crazy but you could do it and uh, while that's neat i also find that a little weird and i think a lot of new tiling window manager users might find that a little weird and i mentioned that i'm not a fan of manual tiling window managers that's why i didn't put it in the great tier but as far as manual tiling window managers go 
I think BSPWM is definitely the best one. I think uh, some of the default layouts make sense. I think, you know, documentation for BSPWM is pretty good. The one thing I will say is like if you go to their GitHub and they explain how uh, manual tiling works, you know, they, they start with like a tree diagram and it's confusing as hell. Like people that really didn't know anything about tiling window managers, BSPWM reading their documentation might be a little confusing. That's why I probably wouldn't recommend BSPWM to somebody that just started with tiling window managers. Moving on to the next tiling window manager on the list is DWM and DWM. I don't think I have to create a new layer here in GIMP for it because I think I'm going to put it in the good tier right alongside um, BSPWM. Let me make this a little bigger here. So why is DWM in the good tier? Well, the good points is that it is a dynamic tiler, which for me, I like. I like the master stack layout, which is the default layout for DWM. It's also the default layout for Awesome being a clone of DWM. And actually, it's a fork of DWM, Awesome is. Now, one of the things about DWM is it's suckless software, meaning that it has a strict lines of code limit that they arbitrarily impose on it, 2,000 lines of code. So out of the box, it is kind of sparse on features. Like you're going to want to patch this thing. And having to patch software, meaning you go grab patches from suckless.org and use the patch command and hope it works, you know, the automatic patching. If it doesn't, then you have to manually patch it where you read the diff files and go place lines of code in specific files in the DWM source code and then recompile. Not new user friendly at all, right? It's and even not it's not new user friendly, but even for people that know what they're doing, people like me, I find that tedious, right? I don't want to do that. So even though I think DWM, as far as just the function and feel of it is fantastic, it easily could be in the great tier, if not for the fact that you have to patch it. Because of that, I have to dock it down into the good tier. Next on our list is EXWM. EXWM is a Emacs tiling window manager so it's an emacs program that you install and then it basically turns emacs into a tiling window manager meaning in your login manager you log into emacs essentially right people always talk about just booting directly into emacs that emacs is an operating system well emacs can't really be an operating system but it absolutely can be a window manager many people do use it as a window manager and i've experimented with it and it had some good points and some bad points but honestly I've got to put it down here in the yuck category. So I, let, let me create a new layer. So I'm going to create this layer, call it yuck. Even though I said, you know, it had some good points and some bad points, the bad points are pretty bad, honestly. So let's start with the good points. The good points is, you know, when you turn Emacs into your window manager, if you know how Emacs works, then you know how your window manager works because all you're doing with EXWM is just you're living inside an Emacs window. And if you know how buffers and frames work in Emacs, that's all you're doing to control windows. You're just, you're just navigating around buffers and frames inside Emacs. So if you're an Emacs user, that's great. You don't, it's not a big learning curve. Honestly, it's not if you're an Emacs user. Now, if you're not an Emacs user, obviously, you, you shouldn't even try this. The other thing with EXWM is that Emacs, and this, this is a fault of Emacs in general, not just EXWM, Emacs is still single threaded. It's not multi-threaded. So do you really want your tiling window manager to be single threaded? No, it's it's very limiting. I have found EXWM to be very slow. It would typically hang on me when I was doing big jobs. You know, I do a lot of content creation, obviously, with, you know, doing things in GIMP and Caden Live, rendering videos and things like that that are very resource intensive. And I found EXWM just really bad for that. I, it crashes all the time and things like things that. I found completely unacceptable. I would never use it on my main production machine. I think it's a neat project, but as long as Emacs has that limitation where it's single threaded, EXWM has to be in the yuck tier. Moving on is Herbs Luft WM. Let me create a new layer for Herbs Luft because it is going to go in the meh category. Herbs Luft is another manual tiler. Again, I prefer dynamic tilers. And Herbs Luft, like BSPWM, can be configured in any language you want. Typically, people use bash scripting to configure it. But, I mean, you could write your Herbs Luft config using anything. 
I, I just find Herbs Luft not as comfy as BSPWM. BSPWM is a little easier to get into, if I'm being honest. Like if I was a new user and wanted to, tr to try a manual tiler first, I said BSPWM isn't I wouldn't, it wouldn't be my first tiling window manager, but it, it could be my second or third, right? Herbs Luft, I would say it's, it's a little more difficult, just a tad. There's some, some slight differences with Herbs Luft and BSPWM as far as Herbs Luft uh, comes with a panel, although I think I used a poly bar with Herbs Luft. BSPWM doesn't come with a panel at all. Most people that use BSPWM use poly bar with BSPWM. Uh, I have actually experimented a little bit using XMO bar with Herbs Luft, and that worked okay as well. One thing I'll say about Herbs Luft, they do have a website, they do have some documentation. I wouldn't say the documentation for Herbs Luft is great. I wouldn't say it's it's deep. Uh, it certainly doesn't compare with the documentation on some other window managers we're going to discuss. Uh, one of them we've already discussed, Awesome, has great documentation. There's a couple we haven't talked about yet that have just fantastic documentation. And one of those that has fantastic documentation is i3. And i3 is another manual tiler like BSPWM and Herbs Luft and honestly I don't think it's as good as BSPWM. There's some things about i3 that irk me a little bit so you know what I'm gonna put it also in the meh category. Now i3WM let's talk about the good. The good is they have a fantastic website with fantastic documentation that is always a plus but I mean you really are supposed to have fantastic documentation right if if the best thing i can say about a, a piece of software is hey it has really good documentation well yeah i mean that's that's a given like if you didn't have good documentation uh, like we shouldn't reward people for for doing the things that they were supposed to do anyway right now let's talk about the negatives with i3 window manager one of the things i don't like about this window manager is the default config i know you can change it but especially with new users the fact that i3 window manager unlike every other tiling window manager known to man there's dozens of these things and, and like hundreds of programs on our Linux systems instead of using HJKL the Vim motion keys they move over one key and use JKL semicolon and it makes this thing practically unusable for anybody used to the Vim motion keys I can't use it you guys have seen me try to use the default config and I immediately have to change it every time I do a base install of i3 I don't know why the devs are so committed to keeping those horrible key bindings but that that's a big deal one thing about the config for i3 is it is written in a uh, invented syntax just for i3 it's written in a new user friendly syntax it's not written in any programming or scripting language like um, most of the rest of this stuff is so like awesome you know you're configuring with lua and dwm everything is in c bspwm could be in any language but typically it's bash scripting right i3wm has its own uh, config file written in its own custom syntax proprietary syntax and that's okay it's very new user friendly but because it's not a proper programming language it is limiting in what you can do in that config right where if you know some lua for example you can configure awesome to do whatever you want or if you knew some c you could do whatever you want with dwm you can't really use that i3 config file to do that much now i3 does have plenty of plugins and extensions there's plenty of documentation you can actually uh, do a lot with i3 i will say as far as being new user friendly it is along with awesome probably the the best for new users out of the bunch we've talked about so far next up is left wm let me create a new layer here because left wm is going to go in the OK layer, so left WM. And the reason left WM is gonna go in the OK layer is because, to me, it's just an OK window manager. I don't love it, I don't really hate it either. I could use it, I, I actually think it's a fine uh, tiling window manager, it's essentially a clone of another window manager we're going to talk about later, Xmonad. LeftWM is written in Rust, but it's not configured in Rust. Like i3, it has a simple uh, syntax that it uses for its config file, a custom syntax. So you, that again, that limits the customization you can make with that config file. So you know you don't have 
ultimate power <laughs> the way you have like with DWM because you, it's written in C you have to go into the C source code and, and do everything which means you can do anything you want to with whatever knowledge you have of the C programming language but you can't really do that with left WM now one of the things I like about left WM is it has the uh, ability to have custom themes meaning you set several different themes and you can swap between them and, and you can swap between using uh, different panels different panel themes and things like that because it, it has these scripts that come with it um, I, I didn't play around with left WM that much when I tried it uh, this was the last time I tried it was probably well over a year ago but I spent a couple of weeks with it and I thought it was neat and I got it working with polybar rather easy uh, because it doesn't come with its own panel you choose a panel polybar works nicely with it for those of you that are already using polybar because it's an xmonad clone uh, xmobar also works really nicely with it. I used XMOBAR with LeftWM for a while too, and that was fine. LeftWM is one of the younger window managers on the list today too. It hasn't been around that long, and I'm sure it's gonna improve drastically from where it's at, but already it's a pretty good tiling window manager. If it was the only tiling window manager on the planet and I had to use it, I'd be okay with it, which is why it's in the okay tier. Next up is Qtile, and anybody that has watched this channel for any length of time probably knows where Qtile is going to go on this list. Qtile obviously, let me get to this layer here, the great layer, because I'm going to add something to the great layer. I'm going to add Qtile. Qtile is an Xmonad clone again, uh, except instead of being written in Rust like LeftWM, Qtile is a Xmonad clone written in Python, and the config file is also written in Python because it's configed and written both in Python, meaning you can do whatever the hell you want to with whatever knowledge you have of Python in that config file, and you can make Qtile do practically anything. So that makes it very powerful because it's written in Python, which is a language you know most people start out with. If you're learning programming, most people can figure out a little bit of Python. I would say Qtile also is one of the more new user-friendly tiling window managers to use. Qtile also comes with a panel out of the box, much like awesome. So again, that makes it new user friendly. Now I've done videos on all of these window managers I'm going to talk about today, but especially Qtile is one I have done many videos. I've got a series of videos on how to configure and customize Qtile. So check out those videos if you're interested. Next up is Spectre WM or Spectrum if you prefer. And I'm going to put Spectre WM in the OK list right alongside of Left WM. I am going to basically say the same things I said about Left WM. Spectrum, like Left WM, is a clone of Xmonad, except it uses a new user friendly syntax and config file, which is nice for new users. It makes these Left WM and Spectre WM, by using a friendly syntax and an easy config file, they make Xmonad or an Xmonad like window manager much more approachable, right? Much more new user friendly, but at the cost of you can't quite extend them to the, the point that you could extend something like Xmonad. I think Qtile really gets it right because it basically made a clone of Xmonad, but it still used a real programming language to do that. And it's configured in that programming language, Python. So that's why Qtile is in the great tier and left WM and Spectrum they have to be just in the OK tier. One nice thing about Spectrum is it does come with its own panel, unlike LeftWM where you have to use a third party panel. Spectrum has a built in panel and it's pretty good. And there's only two more window managers left and I bet people that have watched the channel know where I'm going with these. Uh, so next up is StumpWM and StumpWM, it really can only go in the yuck tier. StumpWM is one of those window managers that I have just struggled with. I did a video, my very first uh, look at StumpWM was probably two, maybe three years ago, and that video is very negative. Uh, maybe a little unfair. <laughs> like Usually when I'm gonna trash a piece of free and open source software, typically I, I, I try not to make the video. <laughs> I just decide not to make it at all. But StumpWM 
And it's frustrating. It's a frustrating tiling window manager to use. It's frustrating to config. It's configured in common Lisp. It uses a lot of Emacs like key cords, key bindings. Uh, so it's very similar to EXWM, right? But not really. EXWM is just an extension of Emacs. So if you know Emacs, you know EXWM. EXWM is much easier to get into. StumpWM is tough. And every six months or so, I actually revisit StumpWM. I still have a config. I, like every six months, I'll, I'll be like, you know what? I'm going to spend a couple of hours in StumpWM today. I'm going to spend a couple of hours with the config just so I can remember, just so I can reevaluate to see if my opinion changes. And it hasn't, you know, in the three years or so since I first took a look at it again, about every six months, you know, twice a year, I'll take a look at it again, you know, off camera for a few hours in a day. And every time I, I go back to it, I still have the same opinion as that it's tough. It seems limited. One of the things that's crazy is I can't even change like the fonts in the panel. It comes with a built-in panel. Uh, they call it a mode line, very similar to like an Emacs mode line, but it comes with the font uh, terminus by default. That's the default font of that panel. And I can't change it because it doesn't support XFT fonts, you know, like modern font rendering and things like that. There is like a, a library, a Lisp library. Uh, I think it's called Quick Fonts that should fix that, but it's no longer supported. Whoever was maintaining it, I, I don't know. It's just weird uh, having a tiling window manager that comes with a panel and the panel is kind of gimped. No pun intended. I would say as far as being new user friendly, StumpWM is as far from being new user friendly as a window manager can be. So I definitely, this is something, you know, if you want to check it out and, you know, you've been around the block a few times, or maybe you just like Lisp, StumpWM, you, you'll probably have a, a better time with it than I did. If you're a new user, stay well away from it. And last, but certainly not least, Xmonad. And of course, you guys know where this is going to go. It's going to be in the great tier. Xmonad, I, I shouldn't have to tell you that it's a great window manager because Qtile, LeftWM, and Spectrum are almost exact clones of Xmonad. Why did they uh, basically design their tiling window manager to function basically exactly like Xmonad? It's because Xmonad got everything right. The way it handles uh, multi-monitors and workspaces, and it's dynamic. It uses a lot of the same uh, dynamic layouts like DWM. It uses the master and stack layout by default. It's just a really comfy window manager. And now let's talk about configuration because when it comes to being new user friendly, Xmonad is not new user friendly. It has great documentation, fantastic documentation. Uh, the documentation is you go look up documentation about the Haskell language, <laughs> Haskell libraries, because it's written and configured entirely in Haskell. Now, because the documentation is great, you know, that's, that's important, but you have to know a little Haskell, right? And most people are not going to be familiar with that particular programming language. And that particular programming language tends to be a little more difficult to grasp, especially for people that are new to programming, unlike something like Python, for example. That being said, if you take the time to learn a little Haskell, learn some of the Haskell libraries, and learn some of the various extensions, Xmonad is extremely customizable, extremely extensible, probably one of the most extensible window managers out there. Maybe, if I had to say it, it's a second place in extensibility. To awesome. Awesome is probably ultimate as far as customization options. In many ways, Xmonad is more suckless in nature than DWM and the fact that Xmonad does not come with a panel by default, although most Xmonad users use Xmobar, which is a panel written in Haskell that's designed really to be used for Xmonad, but it's not part of the Xmonad program itself, so you don't necessarily have to use a panel, which is nice uh, because many tiling window managers actually don't bother with a panel at all, so that's nice that it's not built into it so you're not you know, forced into using it or at least that th there's not source code built into the program for functionality you weren't going to use anyway. So that's my tier list there. Uh, once again, let's cover the great tier. I put three in it and I think those three had to be there. there there's no I, I, there's no way I could not put awesome Qtile and Xmode ad in the great tier. Now some of the rest of them I, I could have place them differently. Uh, BSPWM and DWM, I think they're almost great. Right? <laughs> like they're so close, but yeah, I can't, you know, if you got to split hairs here and if we're creating a tier list, 
you know, I, I, I've got to say, BSPWM and DWM are just not on the level as awesome Qtal and Xmonad, so they've got to be in that second good tier. The OK tier, LeftWM and Spectrum, because they're just OK window managers. Like, I'm OK with them. I don't love them. I don't hate them. I'm just okay with them. On um, the mad tier, Herbs Luft and i3WM, they're tiling window managers that I don't love. You know, I, I can use them, but they're, yeah, yeah, they're meh. And the yuck tier, now the yuck tier is a definite. I, I wouldn't change either one of these, EXWM and StumpWM. EXWM would be fantastic if it wasn't an Emacs plugin, right? The fact that Emacs is single threaded makes it extremely unstable. And because of that, EXWM has to be here. StumpWM, for me, has always just been a mess. So that is my tiling window manager tier list. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Maybe you want some more tier lists because honestly, I wasn't sure how fun this would be, but I enjoyed actually doing this. If you want to see more of my opinions on tier list rankings of various kinds of software let me know down in the comments below now before i go i need to thank a few special people i need to thank the producers of the show devin dustin gabe james max and matt michael mitchell paul scott west why you bald homie Alan Armor, Dragon, Chuck, Commander Angry, Diokai, Dylan, George Lee, Lennox Ninja, Marstrom, Meyer, Jan, Alexander, Peace, Arjun, Vador, Polytech, Reality, for Less, Red Prophet, Steven, and Willie. These guys are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode you just watched would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen as well. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors, right? I'm just sponsored by you guys, the community, if you like my work. I want to see more videos about free and open source software and Linux and telling window managers. Subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys. Now go easy in the comments, this was just my opinion.